All right, so here we're gonna do, we're gonna try this. In DIY Extension Camper Building, I've never painted a vehicle before, but I think I've got a pretty good process here that this is gonna turn out well. So I'm gonna walk you through it and show you what I'm doing to do this DIY paint job and why I'm also doing it myself instead of paying others. So it's gonna be a pretty big video, lots to go over. Let's dive into this. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing to my channel on building out a DIY exhibition camper. This is painting part two and there's a lot to go on in here in the prep work of the painting before we get into the initial painting. But after building this entire camper and building out both the exterior and the interior of this thing completely up from frame rails, yeah, it's now time to get onto the exterior. And there's a lot that has to happen and some things that happened before this. You can still read the gas in there, in that foil sticker. And voila, there it is. Ouch, hot foil. Yes, after removing all the stickers, including those hot foil stickers, you got to sand and mask this entire camper down. But before doing that even, took it out for one more articulation test just to make sure that all the measurements correct where the storage boxes are gonna go. And then of course gave the camper its first clean, serious clean with the pressure washer. And that also meant a really good chance to do a leak test of all the windows and the skylights and of course, the doors and the walls themselves, and of course everything checked out. So now it's time to move on in to all this prep work, to getting this camper and the cab completely painted up. And before even masking, I wanted to remove as much of the parts and trim as I could because all of that stuff now doesn't have to be masked, gets out of the way of the sanding and other prep work. And so that meant removing this roof rack, the front grill pieces or plastic parts that go over the front of the cab, and also, of course, all the lights, turn signals, headlights, all those things as well. And by removing these, it means not only can I get a good access to sanding them, but also they don't have to be masked. And so just getting out of the way saves a whole lot of time because it takes more time masking than it does painting. So let's get into that. All right, let me show you how I remove all the marker lights to tape them up so I don't get them painted. Granted, I could just mask around them, but trying to get a round, perfectly little mask around that light in the grommet, and then of course have a little bit of see-through of the, the original paint color behind the grommet, just too much risk. I did actually look into buying some stickers that are easily removable, even dissolvable stickers that would fit this diameter, but boy, it'd be really hard to get them just perfect. And look how easy it is just to pick these lights out, cover them up with masking. Yeah, I'll have this, this wire sticking out, and I'll have to deal with this while painting. Some, obviously the ones that are hanging down below, sometimes they're much easier, they don't get in the way. This one I'll have to hold up and out of the way and spray. Now granted, if I get a little bit on the wire, yeah, so what, it's okay. I'm not worried about that. It'll be easy to trace it out or repair it or scrape the paint off the wire or see it somewhere if I ever need a new repair later on for these, but likely I never will. They're LEDs, they're sealed, they've been tested. Then once I get these in place, I need to go ahead and just do a little bit of finish sanding right around the hole here to make sure I've got that sand because I took the oscillating sander, went all the way around as close as I could to the light when it's in place. Now I gotta just do a finish right around there, make sure good adhesion all the way up to that hole. And then of course, clean up the entire camper when that's all done. Just simply fold this right around the light and get it really well protected. It just takes two or three inches of this tape and voila, you see how easy that is? All tangled up. And of course, what I will do, once I'm peeling off all these tapes and getting these all back in, I'll just turn on the circuit and that way I can see that every light works as I'm putting them all together. And again, just a little picking tool and that's it. So a lot of little tricky parts here to remove and I've had some challenges with some of them and that, look at this, this is as far as I can pull it out, that's it. And so I've got no extra room to pull this clip out. Now I can just let this clip go right here and tape it here, which is probably gonna do just clean around here and tape it here because I wanna be able to paint all the way up around this trim here like this. So I'm moving this interior trim. I'm gonna tape over the stickers, right? Stickers here, I'll remove you know, the, the door clasp here and all that stuff. But I'm gonna leave this on for now. I'm gonna do my outside first, and then I'll come back in and do the inside later. But I wanna remove some of these things now while I can, but like that little light switch or clip. So there's a lot of little things like that that you know make this challenging. It is literally a sticker, right? It's stuck on. And so do I just remove it and put a new sticker on there? 
that's what I'm thinking of instead of just taping over it when I go to paint this. And so I may just do that. All right. But all this, all in all, I got to at least get like these stickers and stuff taped over for now. One of the first steps is I took off all these marker lights. There are five of them going across the hood here. And unfortunately, the wires, the factory wires do not separate out. There's not a clip or anything in here. They are hardwired into the light mount. So I took off not only the lens, but also the light itself, the bulb. And so now I'm stuck with really this uh, rubber piece which I can't unfortunately really get off, damage a wire. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave these in place, but also wanna paint underneath this rubber grommet. So here my trick is, we'll see if this works, some leftover baggies from a McMaster car, compliments of their excellent shipping, packing routine that they always do. I don't even have to tape up that bag, but I think what I can do is hold this up while I'm painting it spray underneath, hold it up this way, and spray it underneath here. I'm not even gonna mask around this rubber here or the wires, that's obviously not important. I'm just gonna clean it. I've got a bunch of these baggies all the same size. So I'm just gonna do the same all the way down the line of marker lights here. And so that I can capture all of those and be wrapped up. So at least that the rubber is covered up from being painted and that bulb mount as well. But at least I've got the bulb and lens off so at least I know those aren't gonna get covered up. So I don't have to be so precise about it. So it's a quick, Pretty easy way to do it and get it effectively mostly out of the way while I go and paint underneath it. And there's a lot of bolts when you got all these different trim pieces, everything taken off. I've tried to have a system to manage all these little bolts and clips and everything else to go to everything. Basically the key there is really keeping all the bolts and stuff with each part, whether taping them to that part, putting them in a bag and then taping that bag to that part or marking a bag and have all those parts inside that bag or leaving the bolt in its place much like I did with the turn signals and the headlamp mounts down here, leaving those bolts in place. So there's a variety of different techniques and who knows which is the best one. I've never painted before, so I'm gonna figure this out as we go here. There's still a lot of steps to do, so let's keep going and through it. Is really to get in really close here, a piece of tape, and get it all the way around the trim and have the trim in a, in a really fine line cut in and then do another then do a piece of plastic and tape it effectively to this tape so this tape right here that's on right now is just purely to make sure i've got a good clean line and this is pretty tricky to do particularly like with all these curves right and so what i try to do here is is get my fingernail in between the trim and the the body the sheet metal and I could just push it right into this crack right between the two effectively, right? And get that tape hopefully just right, perfectly sealing up along that. And then I wanna seal the tape effectively over that. So when I tape the tape that's holding the plastic onto this, it's got a good seal and also any air or anything that gets in between here, being that I'm, I'm shooting this with a gun, right? Pressurized air, I wanna make sure that no air can sneak in and get on the window or the trim here. The trim will be really hard to remove if at all be able to remove that paint. And you also notice the other thing too is I'm getting really close in here and I'm at eye level to what I'm taping. So if we come on up here to this higher portion here, right here, right, you'll see I do the same thing and I try to overlap, of course, the existing tape. And this may all seem like, you know, rudimentary uh, or whatever, particularly to all those of you that maybe have some experience with this. For those of us that don't, this is my approach and I don't know if this is perfect or not, but just trying to get it as, as good as I can. Really, the tape doesn't bend quite that well, so I, I start with smaller pieces for one, go back in, try to overlap the previous one, make sure I've got a good clean line, and just keep working it around, and uh, make sure I have a good seal here, so if any bit of paint does sneak in here, it doesn't get around that tape. I also know I'm a beginner at this, never have done it, and so I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm at least trying to apply, you know, what logic I can to doing this as well as I can. And uh, with the tools I have available to me, right? And now that's all taped down. By the way, before I did this, I cleaned it all up really well all around here with rubbing alcohol and paper towel. The sheet metal for the full door and up against this plastic trim and up against the glass. That way it's as clean as possible so the tape will stick. I'll make sure I've got a, a clean edge where that paint to adhere to. Everything's already been sanded. The truck's already been washed. So just keep moving along here and just keep knocking hey, these out. You may be asking, why didn't I just go ahead and remove the door handle? And trust me, I tried. Uh, my buddy John and I spent probably 45 minutes trying to remove just this one door handle here. 
And it was a complete pain and it was really not easy. And it was like, okay, we're going to break something here or it's going to be really hard to put all back together. I'm not sure it was worth it. And going back to the bodybuilder's manual, which actually has a section on painting your vehicle. And in there, it has certain parts in there that says to remove and certain parts to just mask over. And the door handles were one of those to mask over and not to remove. They did not really make these door handles easy to remove. It is what it is. So I am just using a bunch of masking tape to mask over this door handle. Hopefully I get it pretty cleanly because it'll be a pretty visible part every time you, you open the door reaching in there. You see, it takes maybe five minutes to mask over it. It's not worth spending an hour plus just to remove it. Each one, right, and then another hour or so maybe to get it back together again and connect all those old rods and everything inside the really tight door handle. So just keep working around it. I've got the window up here trimmed out. See that? Nicely trimmed out now, all the way along. So now I just got to get the masking on there over that and do that same for the other side. And you can see just from the clean process, already up there I've sanded, you can see all this dust and debris that's built up on the air intake box itself. And so a lot of it just is paper towels, you know, pieces of that coming off. And also a lot of it too is also this light sanding I'm doing. I've already washed the truck two or three times before I took on the sanding. I washed after the sanding as well. Now that I've done that and I'm inside and I'm going through and with rubbing alcohol in a sprayer and just spraying it down in my paper towels, I'm still getting a lot of debris. You can see all that debris on there. You know, and you can see here on the tire too quite a bit. So that's why I'm wearing a mask. Of course, I go through so many paper towels, it's also why I'm keeping my trash can readily at bay. And then what I do here is I just keep simply climbing up my ladder, moving down a few feet, spraying that whole camper down from the top and, and start wiping it from the top down as I spray it and then move it down some more few feet and just keep going the same thing from the top down again. Now probably one of the most challenging things in this is really a process and that it's kind of methodical because when you go and wipe something from the top, you don't want to keep moving your ladder all the way down the camper, right? And then go down to a middle span because there's too much of ladder sliding, right? So instead, I start at the top and I spray it and then of course there's going to be overspray, it's going to filter down. I spray all the way down about this level and then I clean a swath, you know, basically a couple feet wide, and then move down the bottom of the, of the ladder, and then I can move the ladder down and then go repeat. So the key really here is make sure you kind of get in a good swath, because you can't really tell that you've cleaned it, especially after it's been sanded, because it's got this kind of like opaque, you know, flat, you know, matte finish on it, right? And so it's difficult to tell if it's really clean or not. So that's why I just kind of pick things like, like this, from here to here is, you know, or from here to here is like cleaning. And then I'll go from like here to say, you know, this tape line here or something, right? Halfway between the window and the door and get that clean. Then go over, you know, the halfway between the door and the window and overlap onto the window and then kind of do the same. Like, okay, the swath, next swath will be the window and all the way down the bottom. And then in between the windows down the bottom and then that last window at the bottom. So just kind of think about like working out this process really helps a lot to uh, make sure I'm not missing spots as I'm doing this. Now, one thing I want to do, too, is also make sure that I not just sand, but also clean really well the inside of the door trim and the inside of the door as well, because I'm going to spray this with this door closed, but undoubtedly some spray is going to enter into the between the crack here on the door frame, and some will get painted onto the door trim and some will get painted onto the door itself. But I want to make sure it's clean and also sanded so that, that paint could adhere well. And also so I don't have to come back over and try to sand and clean later when I got some of this overspray on there. I want to just have it all done so that way I can come back later, mask out the door opening and spray into the door opening here or, or roll it in so I can get the door also opening done. So I don't have this white paint that's now standing out against the gray background. I want to make sure it's all gray all the way up to what can be seen at least into this into this rubber gasket here. So that's why I'm taking my 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 little sanding sponge and I've made sure I've gone around also on all the edges because that's likely where it's going to be hardest for the paint to adhere as well as also all these surfaces here right and then to come back over it spray it and clean it with the rubbing alcohol and so that way and the same on the inside of the door trim here. And then I'll figure out to do the inside. Probably stay white, and that's great. It's a beautiful white. It matches up really nicely with the total composites white on the inside, so that's fantastic. And it's amazing how much dirt really gets built up in all these little places, even though this hasn't been used out camping or adventuring yet. Only uh, here in the garage, just doing its construction process. So it's really important to make sure you get a really good clean job so that way this paint can really adhere well everywhere it's gonna be sprayed. And it's tough to get it clean. It definitely takes time. 
This has been my approach. You just keep spraying everything down. I already went over these edges here with a sponged sander. Got a whole box of these in, in a couple different shapes and different coarseness. And they're nice because they're squishable. So you can sit them up in here and really get them into these grooves. You can also use them wet too. And it just gives you a nice light sand because you can apply pressure real evenly as needed. And so for these tough to, to reach spots, like inside the door here, I can really just get in here with that sander and just give it a really light sand, particularly these really hard to reach areas. Uh, like again, around this door seal as an example, also around the windows and the door trim, the door opening, the door handle, and around the top of the windows. I can really get up in there and of course so what I do is try to make sure I'm covering everything. You notice I haven't pulled this trim off because I'm leaving it right now. I'm just going to spray the outside and I'm going to come back in and do the inside, pull this trim off or other trims where I need to. I pulled this plastic trim off right in the bottom here and some other things. So this should be good to let me get really close. I'm probably going to have to pull these mud flaps off or lift the, tilt the cab forward to, to get to the back of these fender flares to make sure I have a good access into that. But the key right now is just getting this all nice and cleaned up. And this is a little more what that process looks like. Going down the whole entire side of the camper, just keep sliding the ladder, going up and down, up and down on each vertical section. Sander I've been using for like these rounded corners here where of course the oscillating sander doesn't really do well or also up against these spots here. Also in the inside trim here of the door and then also in the door trim itself. I'm definitely gonna cover up of course the door handle mask that out and then I've got to mask out this door handle and a few other things on this side to have this done and then I can actually start painting which would be really cool. And that is coming up in the next video. I'm going to show you the painting and why I painted it, how I went about doing that, some of the challenges, some of the equipment I used and the paint I actually used, the instructions of those paint and other kind of little tricks around the painting itself that I use for the entire cab and camper. So thanks so much for watching, subscribing, share with others. I look forward to share more with you on my next video to come, both in this subpart series on painting my cab and camper and the rest of my whole DIY expedition camper build.